everyone, welcome back to another design tutorial in Adobe XD and today we're going to design these cool action button icons uh, which actually have an action with them and all this is being done with uh, components in XD so you don't really need to create a, a thousand artboards to be able to do this. Just let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite of these three. Is it number one? Is it number two? Or is it number three? Let me know in the comments below. So we're gonna start off with just a single artboard. I've already placed all the icons and the navigation bar at the back. Uh, the icons are from one of my favorite icon libraries called Eva Icons. They're open source, so you can use them with any project that you like. The first step in the process is to make four new anchor points on this navigation bar. If we double click, you can reveal the anchor points here. And uh, if you go towards the center, I want two which are pl placed close to each other and two others which are placed towards the other side and are also close to each other. Now I want to shift each one of these towards the bottom just like this. And uh, you can th do this with more anchor points. I'm doing this right now with just four anchor points. And all I need to do is double click on each of these and once I double click on these, as you can see, they're, they're now coming into shape of like a semicircle of sorts. I just need to adjust each of these handles by moving them around like this to make sure that it's uh, an even curve, more or less. Um, you can refine this later on when you're, do when you're working on your project. You can also refine the edges on top here by just bringing the bringing one handle here and just uh, dragging this one handle from here so you get the point you can do it on your own I am confident that you can do this on your own as well for the next step what we'll do is we will make a rectangle and uh, I'll tell you why in a minute and I'll make a rectangle I'll just drag everything down a little bit so that I can clearly place everything here and I'll make sure that the rectangle is I don't know a thousand uh, pixels of border radius which just completely rounds the edges like this and I'll make it slightly taller as well uh, depending on what I need and I'll remove the borders give it a very slight light shadow like this and we're ready to go as you can see I have brought in different icons one is this cross icon uh, which will essentially be the center of the icon later on and then we have these uh, little action icons on top here as well and I'll just make sure there's enough space on the top and the bottom drag drag the things out if you think it's essential and uh, there you go you have all these actions here now this is the final state of the button but we need it to be in the initial state I will first of all make this a rectangle into a circle just by dragging down making sure that the width and the height match. So if it's 127 height, I need it to make 127 width as well. And I'll make sure that these icons are placed properly. I'll rotate this uh, icon here to make sure it looks like a plus icon here. And I'll make sure that these two are hidden. So I'll just say command comma or control comma on your keyboard. And that will just hide both of these elements. Now we have the initial stage where we want the design to be. So I'll drag everything and I'll also select uh, the hidden layers as you can see on the left panel here. I'll also select them and everything else in here as well. So I'll select everything in this panel and I'll say Command K or Control K on Windows. As you can see on the right, we have this component states. We have default state, which is of course our default state and we'll add a new state. If we click on this plus, I say new state and I say state two, or I'll just say, I don't know, tap for this one. Um, while tap has been selected, I will go ahead and make the final changes. So I'll just, first of all, rotate this uh, cross or this plus icon. I will elongate this rectangle towards the top so that I can uh, encase all the other elements. The next step is to actually go to the layers panel on the left and unselect these eye icons 
and as you can see i can now view my elements here and uh, once everything is done if i go back to default state as you can see it goes back to its original situation now if i go to prototype and i double click on this circle i just single click on this arrow nothing else i will get all these options activated here and for this one i want tap auto animate and for the artboard or the destination i'll choose tap so that is the second state of our element or component and i want to say ease in out that's fine and i want to say 0 0.6 seconds i think that should do uh, let's start it and let's see if this works so if i bring it here and if i click on this circle right here see how it expands and this cross rotates if you want to bring it back all you need to do is Go back to design, go to the tap state here, go, go to prototype, double click on this cross here and single tap on this arrow. And on the destination, I want you to bring it back to default state. That way you can, you know, go back and forth for the animation and the animation will smoothly uh, work just like this. Moving on to the next button. Uh, this action button is rather simple. I just remove the border. I bring in a shadow, I'll just make it 12 by 24, that's, th these are my two favorite numbers for shadows and I'll, you know, darken the shadow a little bit, perfect. And for this one, it's all about the gradients and the shapes. So I've already sha uh, shaved, <laughs> I've already saved um, a color here, which is this gradient, and I can go to this gradient here and adjust it based on my needs. So of course, I want the light coming, the light source coming from the top left. So I'll bring it to the top left and the darker color towards the bottom right like this. So we have this clean little gradient here. Now, any sane person will tell you this white doesn't look uh, visible on this yellow, but again, this is just for aesthetics. Uh, it looks cool and calming, so I'm just keeping it like this. And I'll give it an 80% opacity just like that to make it blend in with the yellow a little more. Uh, the next step that we need to do is create one circle here, which is much smaller than this one. So just you can measure it here or you can make sure this, this is half of this. Um, but for now, I'll just manually do it here. Perfect. I'll also bring this yellow one towards the bottom here so that I can see these elements. And I'll give them the same gradient I gave these, this little guy here. I can adjust it based on either the lighting or I can adjust it based on what effect I want to give. But I'll give it a certain effect like this. I've gone ahead and also imported the icons from Eva Icon Pack. And I've also given them a slight shadow as you can see here, 244 four, and a light gray. Uh, now, for the circles, what we'll do is I'll duplicate this once and for the first one, I will double click and drag and make two anchor points on the top left and the top right here. And what I'll do is I will slowly start to bring these anchor points towards the bottom just like this. Uh, the more you drag them towards the bottom, the better effect you'll get. So remember that and I'll do it like this. I'll make make a shape which kind of looks like a boomerang, uh, almost like a exterior of semicircles. And this is one element. If you go to the layers panel on the left, path 32 is there. So what I'll do for this one is, first of all, I'll place these icons uh, in order towards the top here so that I, when I place the circles, uh, they are easily visible and uh, I'll just place them accordingly. The next step is to make three of these uh, oblong shapes, I don't know what to call them, and I'll place them towards the top left, top, top middle, and the top right, just like this. And I need to mark all three of these, so I'll just mark three of these as first one, and first two, just to remember what we actually named them and I'll place them right at the back of this icon and I will duplicate this big circle and here and place them right here. I'm, I'm not going to do anything right now but just place them like this. 
Next step in this process is to select all these elements here and say Command K or Control K to make it a component. Next thing is to make another state. Here again, I'll name it Tap. And uh, so in default state, as you can see, we have uh, these first three, first two, and first one elements. But in this case, in Tap, what I want to do is delete these three elements. I can do that, don't worry about it. And I will copy these three circles, double click inside this component and paste these three circles inside here. Now remember to delete the extra three circles here so that you don't forget. And the next thing I want to do is just place them according to the icons below the icons, of course, so that you can view the icons and make, make sure that the icons are somewhat centered. And uh, th this looks pretty nice already, to be honest. The next thing I want to do is I want to rename these circles. So remember what we named our earlier ellipses or parts? Now, once we have these circles placed, I want to double click on each circle and make two anchor points on the top left and top right. Nothing else, we won't be editing these anchor points uh, in the future, so you can uh, make them and forget them, basically. So now each of these circles is actually a path. I'll now go up and name these circles. The first one is, of course, first one. The second one is first two. Remember what we named our paths earlier? And this is first three, right? You can quickly just drag all three and place them below this ellipse right here. And that's all you, we needed to do. One last thing is to, of course, rotate uh, this little cross here, or I can rotate the circle, whatever you like. And there we have it. If I go back to default state, I'll just uh, hide these elements, command, comma, or control, comma. And in the tab state, I will just uh, unhide these by clicking on these little eye icons here and that's all we need to do if I go to prototype double click on this circle here click on this little arrow say auto animate tap and tap as a destination I can say ease out 0. I don't know three seconds should be enough and to make it come back all I need to do is say is select the component say tap prototype and uh, if I double click here, I want it to, uh, basically, if I click on this arrow, I want to make it come back to default state with a 0.2 seconds duration. That's all we needed to do. Now, if I bring up the preview, click on this little icon here. Ooh, as you can see, this really floats in with these morphing circles. One little problem that we have is we need to make sure this is slow enough. So for that, I will go back to the default state, double click on this circle and make sure that easing out is actually 0.7 seconds. That should be enough to make it look good. And if I click on this little circle here, ooh, see how these little eggs <laughs> warp in? I'm just calling them eggs because they're yellow and see how it warps in with each of these elements. That looks real nice. The last one is fairly simple. It's just a slightly tedious process, which we can get over easily. I just need to increase the border radius to 48 uh, after making a circle like this. I can make it smaller. I think 40 would be better. Perfect. And I'll remove the border. I've saved this little gradient here, which is the dark light gradient, which basically uh, indicates this is a light source. I'll bring in the flash icon I used in the previous design and I'll give it a very similar uh, kind of light effect as well, which is another slightly changed gradient. Now we have both of these elements ready. The next thing that we need to do is we'll uh, bring in these two icons and also shift everything towards the bottom so that we have enough space. And uh, I'll just connect this with this towards the top and bring it at the back. Now this indicates it's basically a dead circuit of sorts. Uh, and I want to light it up by clicking on this. What I do is I'll just copy this over. I'll convert all of these into, all of these lines into this uh, yellow, a bright yellow color like this. Also the icons as well. So I'll 
change the fill a little bit and make sure this is the same yellow as this and also give this icon the same yellow as this and they have the same yellow not a, now what i want to do is select both these icons uh, and select the inner portion of these icons and i'll say shadow and as you can see just by giving it this yellow shadow i can give it a slight glow just like this and it looks pretty nice it doesn't look like nice on a light background but once we give it a dark background you'll see the difference now for the dark background i'll just give it a rectangle here just like that and bring it towards the back give it a black color or maybe a slightly grayed out color just like this and i'll reduce the opacity a little bit too now we have this at the back i'll lock it up by saying command l that's all we need to do and i'll create a mask out of these elements make sure the mask is big enough so that i can mask the glow of these icons as well and once you make sure there's a mask i just select both these elements the icons at the back and the mask and i'll say command shift m to actually mask these out now i want to place them right above this gray icon and i want to reduce the height of the rectangle or the mask just bring it towards the bottom here so you really can't see it anymore make all of these a component select everything and say command k control k on windows to make this a component next thing we'll do is create a new state which is we'll call it tap once again and on the next element what i'll do is i will double click and select on this mask and increase the height of the rectangle as such another thing that i need to do is make a flash appear in front of that so i'll create another rectangle which is essential which will essentially be a similar yellow as what i created earlier and place it at the back like this i'll copy this yellow that we have here and in the right panel here as you can see there's a blend mode drop down if i click on it and if i click on soft light as you can see we have this soft light kind of effect uh, the next thing is to basically adjust the anchor points to fit right behind this light source of sorts and make sure that it's something like this perfect and i'll also give this a slight gradient and make sure that the top portion of the gradient is um, also a similar yellow but is zero percent in opacity so that we can have this little flashlight effect right here also i would like to change the gradient of this uh, light source to this bright yellow that i've saved already and um, also change the gradient of this uh, from this bright color here to this really bright color here and i'm just, just adjusting the gradient to change the color cross this element out and i'll double click on this component and paste it inside the component here also make sure this is at the back of this rectangle and there you go if i go back to default state it's this simple state here if i go to prototype double click on this light source and click on this arrow key uh, i can say auto animate tap and choose tap as my destination and i'll say wind up for a little winding up effect for the light i'll say 0.6 seconds there you go and if i click on preview i preview this element if i click on this ooh, see how this little thing passes through and it looks as if it's a real circuit let's play it again oh nice man i love this i love this and if you loved this video go ahead and subscribe to my channel click on the bell notification icon so that you get all my notifications and also hit the like button if you like this video I post videos every monday and thursday so keep watching stay tuned i'll see you in the next video god bless